about time to bust out the router and make some holes. Each one of those spots where it crisscrosses, there'll be a pilot hole. And then I'll go in with my circle jig and countersink them and then pop them through. But rather than making all those marks again and measuring everything out, I'm just gonna go ahead and cut me another front plate for the other tower, line it up on here, and drill the pilot holes at the same time. This way it can't be anything except exact. Yeah. Both pieces are cut. The two top plates, one for that box right there, one for the box I'm about to make next. But uh, the hard part is getting four, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 40. There's gonna be 16 holes on each one of these baffles and I want them to be exactly the same. So what I'm gonna do is, let's say I'm drilling right here. That's the spot for one of the ports. Well, it's going to go all the way through to the second board, so I'll know exactly where that pinpoint is. I mean, you know, pretty basic stuff, but it's a time saver rather than going through, like I said, and measuring out each one of those little spots. So. Yep, just like that. Yep, a bunch of little holes. So when I take this top lid off, look what I'm left with. A bunch of holes. Don't even have one single pencil mark on this bottom sheet and it'll be able to be duplicated just like that. So anytime you want to make a speaker box and do a double baffle on the top, or maybe a, uh, a, a countersunk woofer, so do the same thing. Put both your pieces together and do one pilot hole through the top and through the bottom and there's no way it can't be centered. So just like a little tip for you for the day. All right, so as you can see, I got a game plan now. All I gotta do is turn all those dots into countersunk circles and this thing will be ready to go. And that other piece over there since I already pre-drilled it earlier, I, all I have to do is exact sa the exact same thing. Don't need to draw any circles, don't need to measure anything. So that'll be a plus. So I might have to go with the time-lapse video on this one because it's gonna take me quite a long time. So. In case I haven't introduced you to the greatest tool on earth, it is the router with the circle jig on it. If you're making circles like I used to back in the day with a jigsaw or whatever you could find, man, you're doing it like a caveman. This is the way to go right here. So I know I'm gonna need some five and a quarters, some sixes, and some sevens and all kinds of stuff in order to make that countersink. After you well, see a little bit of this time lapse, you'll understand how it works, but it's the best tool on earth. Perfect circles every time. People always wonder why, you know, you say you're gonna do a build and then like two months later, you're still working on it. Well, a lot of it is, uh, preparation and planning and to get these things countersunk the right way with no measurements given to me um, you just got to kind of like experiment a little that's why I got that board over there done some practice circles just to make sure I got the right the right depth or the right sizes and everything else I need so when it's all said and done you might end up with something like this So I'm going to start out with the three inch arrow ports, which are these right here. And 
And I already know, because I already experimented and took measurements, that six and three eighths is perfect for the, the total outside. But I don't want to cut it all the way through. I just want to cut it a little bit. See this right here? Six and three eighths. So what you're seeing on the paper is six and three eighths, and then the next number, and then the next number, and then the final number, which is the cutout. Here's the circle jig. Let's find six and three eighths. Right here. And I'll make my first pass and I'll just graze the top. And I'll do that for a couple of passes and then pop it out. So like I said, as soon as I put this on super speed, you'll be able to see me get it all done. It's gonna take quite a while. I got 32 holes total. Each one of them has about four passes. So I got work to do and I'm gonna to have to put this camera down for a few minutes. Alright, so this is two passes. I've got to make a third pass and then finally cut the fourth pass out. And then that's how you end up with this. So I'll do that for the sevens and the tweets with their own respective measurements, of course. And then it should start really taking shape. So bow down to the circle jig on the reel. Yeah. Alright, each chamber is supposed to be half a cube, but I made it all one cube, and that was to accommodate that three inch aeroport. It's kind of big, so what I'm doing is I'm using these, making some little things to take up some space in the box. So once I put those together and drop them in, it'll be exactly half a cube per chamber, and there's room for the port. So in case you're wondering what that's all about, you'll see. Got these all hooked up proper. All right, those are all done. Do a little round over on that. Now each chamber is exactly half a cube, right where it needs to be. And plenty of room for the aeroport right in there on the side. Kind of sucks I had to waste that much space, but that's the way it goes sometimes. Yep. Heavy motherfucker. Is it heavy? 
<laughs> then we got the other set over there ready to roll. All right, so I got this whole other one to build. But the hard That's the only set. update I have for you for the rest of the day on these because I'm ready for a shower and to kick back and relax for a little bit. I'm covered in sawdust, you know, as you can see, top to bottom. The next update, these things will probably be playing so I can see what they sound like before I built the other box.